Hello from Dartmouth, I'm Julian, I'm from Sydney, Australia, I'm a 25 here at Dartmouth and I'm studying economics. Um, so I got to Dartmouth about eight weeks ago, it's been about two months now. I think my favourite thing, specifically academically, I guess like when I think back to high school, it was really competitive, no one would share notes, everyone was kind of up in each other's grill. But here, I mean, like, I already had quite a few exams, quite a few assignments, but everyone is always just ready to help out. Everyone's sharing notes, everyone wants you to do your best. And it's kind of an experience that I've never felt before and I absolutely love it because I guess back home as well, I was always a part of that competitive nature. So it took me a while to adjust, but um, I'm really enjoying just like being kind of like a, kind of like one community where everyone's in it together. It's a, it's a, nice, it's a nice new experience. So I guess the main reason I chose Dartmouth, I mean the first thing was that I just, just in terms of America in general, I just didn't really want to go to um, an Australian university. I always kind of saw myself a bit kind of beyond that, I guess. I went to like a, on a basketball tour to Princeton in like 2017 and I just kind of saw the campus and I, I was in love with it. I thought it was so cool to be in America and from there I just started kind of thinking about what it would be like to go to college in America. So I really started digging into it. My dad worked in New York for quite a while and he had a lot of mates that came out of Dartmouth so he was the first one to recommend it to me. And when I started looking into it, you know, beyond obviously it being Dartmouth and the academics and obviously I've seen it in quite a few TV shows and movies that I've watched. But it was, I mean the two big things were that it was a small campus, um, which I kind of liked because it mimicked my high school, which is pretty small. Um, and it was also not in the city, which was something probably not for postgrad, but especially for undergraduate, that was something that I was kind of really looking for compared to especially some of the other good universities here. Um, I kind of want to be away from like that main life so everyone's kind of in it together, everyone's kind of focusing on each other and not like the rest of the world, which I think is quite cool for an undergraduate experience. I was pretty involved with my school. I went to Cranbrook in the eastern suburbs. I think the main so in terms of like leadership, I guess that was one of the big categories um, that was for my application. I was the house captain of one of the few houses there and I was one of the leading prefects in like the 25 person prefect body. So I think that was, that was a really nice thing um, for my application. Another big one was sport. So for basketball, I played varsity or like Australia, they say like first. And then I was captain of final year. So I had three years there and then captain of final year. And then I also played first volleyball or varsity volleyball quite useful and then obviously across the way I did a lot of rugby, a lot of swimming, a um, bit of water polo, some rowing, just like kind of a mix, just a broad spectrum. I did enjoy my sports but I kind of started dialing them down I guess in year 11 and 12 when I really started focusing on academics. And then co-curricular wise in terms of like service, Cranbrook didn't offer too many opportunities. Um, I guess the big one I did with Cranbrook, which every school does, is like the Red Shield Appeal and Clean Up Australia Day. But they also did quite a few like reading programs, like the Smith program and the Buddy to Buddy reading programs, which I did for, I think it was like 18 weeks was one of the programs I did. And then outside of Cranbrook as a whole, my main service work was with a charity called Charity Bounce. And they pretty much used basketball, um, which aligned quite nicely with me, to like hook less fortunate, fortunate communities and indigenous communities, and then use that for like employment programs and life skills which was really nice. And I even went to Larry Pinta and the Alice Springs and we did some hikes there, raised some money, built some basketball courts. Yeah, really good time. I started, I guess, after that year 10 basketball experience when I started really considering it. The first thing I thought of doing was the ACT. I wasn't entirely sure about the distinction and I wasn't, didn't really have like the timings down and I didn't realize how quick the ACT actually was. What I was told was it was like easier content, um, but you could you have to do it a lot quicker. And like from my previous experience, that aligned quite nicely with me. So I put all my eggs in one basket and I did all my study for the ACT. And then it came out about a week from when I was actually supposed to sit it, which I think I was like halfway through year 11, maybe. This is before COVID had even happened. And I kind of got too scared. And I was like, I, was, I, was, I wasn't ready. I didn't think that like the score I was gonna get was gonna be enough. So I decided not to do the ACT. Um, and I started to start focusing on the SAT because I just didn't, I wasn't quick enough for the ACT, I didn't think. So I shifted everything to the SAT and I booked my test in for a couple months later. 
and I was doing pretty well in my practice tests there. I think the skills are pretty transferable, so it wasn't like a waste of time doing all the ACT study. Um, but I pretty much just got a bit more time to do it and I worked out a better pattern. And the day before I was going to sit my test, it was going to be at the Scots College, which was just down the road from me. I woke up at 6am and I went down to the testing centre and I was super prepared. I hadn't done like two weeks of HSC study because I was you know, only focusing on this and they had shut the testing centre down because of COVID. So that was the first time I didn't get to do it. And then I booked in three more throughout the next couple of terms and they all got cancelled. And it was also a big waste of my time because I was studying for the SAT throughout all of that. And by the end, I think there was one more test I could have done that actually would have made it to my early decision application here at Dartmouth. And I just decided because it was test optional that I wouldn't submit anything at all. Alright, so I meant my main, I set like a pretty, especially with Crimson, we set out like a pretty nice plan um, going forward. The only two that I really submitted because I was like in, literally about to sit my HSC, um, Dartmouth was my ED and then there was also like the UC schools. So I obviously got them out of the way first and I just like submitted, I think I submitted those like October at nine or October eight. I think I got my ED in for Dartmouth, which was I think about a month early or 20, 23 days early. Um, so that was quite nice. So I kind of, my main focus throughout like the entire time because I always had like trials and HSC to deal with was just knocking the Dartmouth ED out and also some of the UC, the UC schools, which I all got in before like November one. And then after that, I had a massive break because I obviously need to focus on HSC because at the end of the day, I didn't know if this was going to work out, if I was going to get accepted. And I obviously needed like the backup to go to an Australian university. So when that was done um, and about the month and a half period before I found out about results in Dartmouth, I focused on all the other schools. So I, I wrote most of my supplements for Duke and UPenn and Brown and Columbia and I think a few others around the place um, and they were kind of just sitting there ready to submit based on if I got into Dartmouth or not but I was just going to wait because if I didn't get into Dartmouth I was going to spend a lot more time on confining them but pretty much in that break I just got my plans down really nice and compact so I knew exactly what I was going to do if I didn't get in and then I was just going to work from there but it was pretty good for me because I once I got into Dartmouth I kind of I was very happy so there was nothing else really for me to do so it worked out well. Yes, yeah, so I was really confused about what I was going to write about my personal statement. It took me like, I would say a good month before I even came up with like a preliminary idea. I was, I always like say I didn't really think there was anything like too interesting. Like there were obviously some, some great stories about people and I was like, I feel like I didn't have anything like that. And I mean, even like the first day we got to Dartmouth and Hanlon was speaking to us in the, in the common area and there was literally every kid there. And they made this massive John performance and it was like the best lines from the best common app essays. And some of the things these people were doing were incredible. And that was like something that I felt like I missed in my application. So the process I went down there, um, I kind of just wrote out things that I was scared of or like that I thought was mysterious or kind of like weird life experiences. And I literally just wrote down like one words, I wrote down about 50 of them. And I kind of went through and I knocked them off until I kind of got down to some words that I thought like would have been like a cool way to um, introduce like a personal statement. And I ended up on my fear of spiders. And that was how I started my common app. And it was about how there was a myth a while ago and it's been kind of shut down now, but like eight spiders crawl through your mouth or you know, you swallow eight spiders in your lifetime, probably when you're sleeping. And that was actually like a, a study by some university to show how quick rumors spread. And it was kind of like my process of going from like how scared I was of spiders and it literally brewed from like that rumor and then like kind of my process down to like how I figured out that that was not actually true and all my experiences with spiders and that segued into like camps that I'd done and overcoming the fears of that um, around certain groups of people. So I got, I think I had five letters of recommendation overall. The absolutely mandatory one was the counselor one. My problem with the counselor, I was never close with him so and I didn't really like him either. So I kind of had to get into a close relationship with him. And actually through the process, I actually ended up really liking him. He's a really great guy, a really great teacher. And we just kind of talked about the process. Um, you know, he actually didn't know much about US universities at all or like anything about that. So I kind of gave him insight on that. And then we kind of went back and forth about um, the rec letter. He was quite nice specifically about kind of what I wanted in there. So he would just like, he obviously didn't let me have much say, but he would just, 
kind of check in weekly as he was writing it, saying, you know, is this kind of something you want me to put in there? Do you like this sentence? Which is really nice. That was that was the main one. I think that was quite an important one. Dartmouth, they recommend a peer letter. So the way I went about that, I had like, I went to my closest girlfriend and my closest guy friend, and I both told them that I needed this peer recommendation letter. And I didn't tell them that I was asking them both to do it. And I got them both to do it, put in their best effort, and I chose the one that worked the best. Um, you know, it was a really great recommendation letter. So that was the second one. And then obviously, if they're your good mate, that's probably the, the person you should choose, and they're not going to be hesitant to write that for you. So that should never be a problem, especially at Dartmouth. Um, and then the other ones, I got three from teachers. So I got, I kind of wanted to spread it between like my subjects. So I got one for my economics teacher, because that was something I knew I kind of wanted to study here. I got one for my maths teacher, because he was my favorite teacher. And then I got one from my head of house, who was kind of like a business economics teacher, but he was more just like a mentor to me. So I feel like over those three kind of more academic ones, that kind of covered a broad spectrum between like two subjects I'm passionate about and also like kind of my leadership and experience around the school um, with, mentoring, with mentoring everyone. So between those five, I mean, the teachers are very accommodating. You just have to just ask, ni ask nicely, send a nice email, go talk to them. By the time you're in year 12, you should have a pretty good relationship with your teachers, so it should be fine. Just be nice to them, be respectful about it, and they're always more than happy to help out and give you that recommendation letter that you need. It's probably not like, it shouldn't, I guess in my mind it was surprising, but it shouldn't have been completely surprising. Um, I guess at high school, you kind of do a lot of things and it's easy to be like kind of at the top for all of them. And when I got here, I think the biggest shock was that there is someone way better than me at absolutely everything. So the things that I used to be, or at least I thought that I was the best at, I was really good at, it just puts into perspective when you get to a place like this that there are some people doing some absolutely incredible things and they're doing all of it at once and they're better than you at all of it at once. And there's just nothing you can do about that. So I mean, even basketball is a massive thing for me here. Obviously I haven't played in 10 months, but even the club basketball team, they only took, took in four kids this year um, from 25s. And I obviously didn't get to make that, um, which was a bit of a shock because basketball, I mean, I've been playing that my entire life and I loved it, but every, they were just, everyone's just better. Um, unfortunately, um, same for academics, you know, I used to always want to study by myself because I thought that, you know, I wouldn't, if I was studying with people, I would just be helping them out and now that I'm here, I'm just asking for help constantly. Like, I'm n in no way or in any shape, I like, kind of at that same level in like rankings or status that I used to be at or I thought I was at in high school and just, it was just a big kind of surprising shock that everyone has something above you in a good way and no one's kind of arrogant or no one has an ego about it everyone's like I said before willing to help out but it's just it's weird to see that everyone is kind of above you on some level. So if you were gonna be applying overseas I would just start thinking about it early just really just get into the the crunk of it kind of like now or start when you're young especially because I had a lot of mates that tried to get in overseas and they just tried way too late and because of that it was just too hard to kind of figure out everything that they'd missed along the way and all the little things that they just then couldn't fill the gap in because it was it was too late for them so start early the earlier you can the better just start thinking about the things that you need to do to get your application where it needs to be and the earlier you knock it off the more time you have to spend on exams and marks which is again probably the biggest part of this entire application process Without the exams and marks, you can't get in, but also about the other stuff. So try and knock it off as early as you can. That would definitely be my biggest piece of advice.